Hey everybody, welcome to PT Final Exams Chop and Lift PNF Patterns. This is another crash course. I've been making a couple of these lately about how to understand some principles that really trip up a lot of students. And so today we're going to be talking about chop and lift PNF patterns and hopefully make things a little bit clearer as you're considering what these patterns really mean and how you can apply them in your practice as you head down, head down the road. So technically, let's talk first about the chop pattern. I'm going to demonstrate that in the camera first. You're not going to get a great picture of it. There's a lot of other good YouTube videos that talk exactly about the chop pattern, how to, to do it. But I want to talk about the mechanics and the principles behind the pattern, which will help you understand and apply it a little bit better. So the chop pattern technically starts in a D1 flexion pattern on the reference arm. Right arm, reference arm. Start with a fist, and then you're coming down. Now the reason it's a chop pattern is because you're allowing your good arm or your non-reference arm to assist it as it comes down into a chop. So as you start with a fist, you're coming down, you're opening your hand and coming to your side in D1, extension, starting at the ear, coming down. That's what is called a chop pattern. And the direction you're headed, you know, if, again, if we talk about the right arm as the reference arm, the right arm as the reference arm has come across and is starting at your opposite ear and is moving down to your side in what is called the chop pattern. Now if you headed the opposite direction, the opposite diagonal, that would be technically a reverse chop. So from one perspective, you're starting with a reverse chop and going down into a chop. Reverse chop, chop. As you start from the chop, you're coming back up into with a fist. That is called a reverse chop. Again, it's totally dependent on your reference arm. If the right hand is reference arm, starting in D1 flexion, going to D1 extension, is called the chop. And coming from D1 extension with your, your hand open all the way up to your ear is called D1 flexion or the reverse chop. Chop, reverse chop. So again, that's the diagonal we're talking about. Now talking briefly about the lift, lift is in the opposite pattern. So again, we were talking about the right starting at the ear and coming down. Now we're going to start with D2 extension, which is, remember this is grabbing the, the sword out of your pocket or, you know, grabbing the sword out of the, the sheath and coming up with your, on opening your hand as you come past. So you're coming from a fist, coming all the way up, and I'm showing it up a little higher so the camera will show it, but in essence, you're starting at the opposite hip and coming up into the D2 flexion pattern, and the left arm is going along for the ride. As you start with the fist and come up, D2 flexion and extension. So as you come up, that's what's called the lift. And as you come down, that's what's called the reverse lift. So again, if we drew out the little guy, if the right arm is the reference arm that we're talking about, you're gonna be starting up here well, no, I take that back. You're starting down here at the opposite hip and working up this direction in what's called the lift pattern. So the right arm is starting coming across like this, with the left arm holding on tight, and coming up into D2 flexion. So that's what's called lift. And as you can imagine, if you come back from the top of the lift down to the bottom again, thus it would be called reverse lift. Now, a key distinction here is you have to understand which limb is the reference arm. You know, which arm is the reference arm? Because if you look at it, starting up here and coming down, that's what's called the chop. But if it was my left, if I was looking at my left arm, I'm starting in the reverse lift position, or I'm starting lift position and coming down to reverse lift. So chop, or yeah, coming from reverse chop, down to chop is the same as going from lift to reverse lift. Again, totally depends on which arm you're talking about. So in this particular video, we've been focusing on the right arm. If the right arm starts up here in D1 flexion and comes down to D1 extension with the left arm along for the right, that's what's called reverse chop, chop, reverse chop, chop. If we're starting from the opposite hip and coming up, that's called lift with your hand open, reverse lift coming back down, lift, reverse lift. Now again, if I put my hands together, just so there was no difference between the two, and I started down here, I'd be technically a chop on the left and a reverse lift on the right. And I'd come up into a lift on the left, 
no, a reverse chop on the left and a lift on the right. You can see how this gets really confusing really fast. But again, if you look at that diagonals, if we're going up and down this way, you know, if those are the arrows here, this would be the chop coming down and the reverse chop going back up again. Again, this is all, it totally depends on the reference arm. And then the, as I've drawn up here, that you have the lift and the reverse lift. Thus, you have this diagonal pattern that can be very confusing if you forget which arm is the reference arm. But always in the reference arm or the weak arm or the arm you're working on, that's what you're going to title the lift, reverse lift, reverse chop, chop, that sort of a thing. So let's talk a little bit about application here. So chop and reverse chop, if you consider, you know, the biggest one that, that we run into this with is stroke patients. So if someone has a stroke, you're going to want to work outside of synergy because usually their synergies are quite strong. So you're going to try to work out of synergy. So a chop, the reverse chop, chop with the right arm, as you come down, that's technically more inside of the synergy than if you started with the reverse lift, lift, reverse lift, lift. Again, the idea is trying to get them out of synergy, and if you can use their good arm to help their sore arm come out of synergy, you're getting a little bit of active assisted range of motion that helps get them outside of the synergy pattern and gets them more along the lines of functional, you know, more return to a function. Now, if you had someone with just various type of shoulder injuries, if you had a shoulder, then it doesn't really matter which one. Basically, you'd look for the impairment and you would allow the good arm to help the sore arm through the reverse chop, chop, or the reverse lift, lift. Going through that, again, just basically it's active assisted range of motion, trying to increase muscle strength. And then the other one to consider is that with uh, some type of spinal cord injury or other type of impairment where rolling is in, where you can't roll or functionally roll very well in supine, Basically, the, the chop is going to be your best friend as you come from a reverse chop to a chop. You're going to rotate as you go into, you know, into the full chop pattern. So you get the rolling function. There you go. So a quick crash course. Again, just meant to be a, a few quick thoughts on how to distinguish the difference between a reverse chop and a chop and a reverse, or, yeah, reverse lift and a lift based on the reference arm and that the other arm is doing the opposite thing as it goes through the patterns, but that doesn't really matter as much if you understand what your reference is. So thanks again, appreciate it. PT Final Exam, your awesome resource preparing for the NPTE. Check out uh, my other videos on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, or check out ptfinalexam.com. Thank you.